What's up everybody, welcome. My name is Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified veterinary neurologist. And on today's episode, I wanted to tackle a topic that's been on a lot of pet owners' minds over the last couple of years, and that is the issue of grain-free diets. This concern started in 2018, and there's been some back and forth ever since then as to whether or not grain-free diets do indeed cause heart disease in dogs. And if so, why do they do that? So I'm going to quickly review the entire debate, talk about what the disease actually is, and go over some of the latest research that sheds a little bit more light on this whole issue. But please, if you don't mind hitting that like and subscribe button before I get started, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel grow, as they say. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to review is what exactly is DCM because this whole issue is based off of this specific heart disease. DCM stands for dilated cardiomyopathy. The condition results when the heart essentially degenerates, the chambers enlarge, and the heart ultimately becomes very weak and isn't able to pump blood through it and through the entire body the way it normally should. And this results in a lack of blood flow and basically a backup of blood throughout the body. The disease is treatable, or better put, manageable, but a very large percentage of dogs will uh, have a shortened lifespan because they ultimately die of heart failure. So it's a very sad disease. A few breeds are predisposed, such as Dobermans, where about half of the Doberman population is affected or will be affected by this problem, but also Boxers, Great Danes, and certain other breeds can develop the condition. So the fact that we see this problem in certain breeds more frequently than others suggests a genetic and heritable aspect to this condition. However, sometimes the disease can occur due to specific nutritional deficiencies. Such examples include taurine deficiency, carnitine deficiency, and others like vitamin E or selenium. So basically, DCM can be caused by either genetics that create a degenerating heart muscle or a lack of certain nutrients in the body and in the diet. So where does the whole grain-free issue come in? Well, in July 2018, the FDA issued a statement saying the following. We are concerned about reports of canine heart disease known as dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM, uh, in dogs that ate certain pet foods containing peas, lentils, or other legumes, or potatoes as their main ingredients. These reports are highly unusual as they are occurring in breeds not typically genetically prone to the disease. The FDA is investigating the potential link between DCM and these foods. We encourage pet owners and veterinarians to report DCM cases in dogs who are not predisposed to the disease. Fast forward to 2020 and the FDA received over 1,100 reports of dogs not typically known to develop genetic DCM developing the condition. The FDA initially and veterinarians initially were concerned mainly with the grain-free component, but there was some consensus statements that came out saying that we weren't exactly sure. Now, unfortunately, the message between the consensus statements and what the scientists were thinking and the masses wasn't communicated very accurately. And essentially what became the underlying thought process was that grain-free diets cause DCM in dogs. But there's a lot more to it than that and research that has been happening since then has been trying to nail down exactly what is the cause of DCM in these dogs who develop it but don't get it from a genetic reason. So in a new study, Dr. Lisa Freeman, who is a nutritionist and PhD at Tufts Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine, recently looked at nine diets that the FDA has associated with reports of DCM and compared those nine diets to nine commercial diets or kind of think of them as a control group, just traditional dog food diets. She looked at over 800 different compounds in the diets and using an approach called foodomics, was able to very accurately analyze the constituent components, macronutrients and micronutrients of all the diets that they looked at to try to determine exactly the type of makeup within each diet group. She labeled the DCM causing diets as 3PFDA simply because those diets consisted mainly of pulse ingredients, which are lentils and peas, alongside sweet potatoes and red potatoes. So that's why it's the 3PFDA label in the study. What they found was that about 127 ingredients were discovered in the 3P FDA group that were uh, present in significantly higher quantities compared to the control group. Conversely, in the 3P FDA group, they also found a number of ingredients, I think it was 27, that were significantly lower than in the control group. And of those ones that were lower, they found many of those were B vitamins. So after they determined the constituent components of all these different diets, 
they went back and they tried to figure out, well, what ingredients like, you know, rice, peas, potatoes, etc. What ingredient was associated with creating that difference the most? And what they found was that there was four different ingredients mainly. That was peas, uh, chicken or turkey, rice, um, and lentils. But the one by far that had the strongest association was peas. Researchers and veterinary cardiologists have suspected a role of peas. We've started to notice that peas being in the diet seem to have this effect and kind of are associated with DCM. But this is a little bit more objective data showing that peas do have an association with creating actual compounds that we can identify and say, oh, these are how these diets are different. But it's important to note too that we still don't know what it is about peas that seems to cause this. Um, and we also don't know if it's something that I mentioned in the lower group where maybe there's something lacking in these diets rather than something being excessive that may be contributing to this heart condition. For instance, vitamin B is very important in cardiac health and it's used in multiple systems across the body. And a vitamin B deficiency can have severe effects in various organ systems. So it could be that these diets, at least in theory, if they have lower amounts of vitamin B, that could be affecting the heart. Again, we just don't know. Another possibility is that there may be some form of like a toxin buildup in these 3P FDA uh, diets that they looked at. And they also discovered that there were some compounds that were totally unrecognizable when they analyzed them. So it could be that there's something actually tainted about the products as well that's damaging the heart muscle. So obviously there's still a long way to go to uncover exactly why these grain-free diets tend to cause DCM in dogs. Peas seem to be a major culprit, but we don't know exactly why. I like this study, however, because it used really advanced technology, foodomics, to help determine precisely the ingredient differences between these at-risk or FDA foods versus traditional diets. I'd like to also point out that because there's so much confusion around this issue, the FDA has an ongoing and up-to-the-date Q&A online for pet owners to go to. It helps answer a lot of questions that you might have, and I would direct everybody to this to help with any sort of questions or concerns you have about what to feed your pet. But as far as I'm concerned, the very best thing you could do is to consult with a board-certified veterinary nutritionist such as Dr. Bolin, who I spoke with a couple of months ago. Her and her colleagues are literally the experts in canine and feline nutrition. Um, if you have any questions, whether it's just maintenance therapy for your dog or if your pet has some sort of uh, nutritional need or disease that needs precise nutritional management, please, you can go online. Uh, the Board of Veterinary Nutritionists has a website and you can look up the nearest specialist to you um, by zip code. Um, there's not too many of them, unfortunately, but there is a good bit and a lot of people don't know about them to begin with. So I view these people as a tremendous resource that is potentially untapped. And again, if they're anything like Dr. Bolin, they're going to know what they're talking about. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about some of the information I provided today. Um, again, hope I can shed some light on this issue at least a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.